Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers, Vans Fly's new RV15 wing, Skillbird's update taking a load, Wayax B one week wonder delivered to the Smithsonian. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sport Plane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Vans flies new RV-15 wing. Not only have the folks at Vans Aircraft designed a new wing for the RV-15, but they just started flying it. One of the most anxiously awaited aircraft expected at Oshkosh 2025 seems to be hitting its final strides before Vans freezes the design and starts on a path to kit hood. The new wing offers a number of upgrades including an expansion of fuel capacity to 60 gallons, and the first flight apparently met with the approval of those involved in the initial flight test, though data is slim at this point. Final upgrades have been coming in hot as the RV-15 now sports a new tail with a conventional elevator horizontal stabilizer combination on a longer tail cone, while the control system has been significantly changed from the previous engineering test article. Vans reported that RV-15 is now harmonized in pitch and roll to deliver what they call the signature RV feel, with control forces tailored to its backcountry mission. Earlier this month, the RV-15 passed a wing load test that validated the engineering models, including the new and larger integral fuel tanks in the wings. This configuration of tank is located between the forward and aft spars, ostensibly to maximize strength. After the break, FAA grants approval of major AV30C software upgrade. DirectFly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single-engine, two-seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple, all-metal aircraft design provides low-maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. FAA grants approval of major AV30C software upgrade. UAVionics has completed FAA approval of software version 3.0.1 for the AV30C flight display. This software update comes at no additional cost to existing users. Version 3.0.1 introduces a suite of enhancements, including a turn coordinator, bank angle or turn rate, rate of climb overlay, FT and M, high-low voltage indication, G-min and G-max tracking, vertical speed indicator on traffic display, FAA-approved AV-HSI integration with digital nav and GPS, and FAA-approved AV-APA integration with STEC autopilots. Updraft carries oxygenless paraglider to 28,000 feet. On May 24th, a routine paragliding equipment test went wrong when a strong updraft pushed the pilot to an altitude of 28,000 feet. He was able to regain enough control to get back on the ground, where he will stay for the next six months due to the flight ban that followed. Experienced Chinese paraglider Peng Yujiang had been testing out equipment near the Gansu province in northwest China. The 55-year-old was reportedly level at around 10,000 feet when he had a strong updraft in a cumulonimbus cloud, dramatically increasing his altitude. Before he knew it, Peng climbed to 28,208 feet. Approval granted for EarthX 12-volt STC for Aviant Pit Series. EarthX has received an STC for one of the most popular sport aircraft of all time, boasting of their 5.4-pound EarthX ETX900 TSO battery, offers exceptional weight savings for aircraft that are particularly weight conscious. In one comparison, the ETX900 offers a weight savings of 17.35 pounds over a competitive lead-acid product. The company also claims better cold cranking capabilities, double the lifespan of a number of lead-acid alternatives, and a lifespan two to three times that of a lead-acid battery. 
Vintage Aircraft Association has big plans for AirVenture 2025. The EAA's Vintage Aircraft Association has a packed lineup of aircraft gatherings and activities planned for Oshkosh 2025. Cessna 180-185s will be one of the featured aircraft types, with more than 50 already registered to attend. Additionally, the Travel Air and Fairchild Aircraft Manufacturing Companies celebrate their centennial anniversaries this year. The Charles W. Harris Youth Aviation Center will expand last year's offerings with additional activities and events for children of all ages. Vintage in Review presentations will return in 2025, with a complete schedule of events to be announced soon. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Scalebirds update, taking a load. The first in the Scalebirds Light Fighter series is nearing design completion after extensive flight testing and some final load tests. The first of their birds, a P-36, to be followed by a P-40, has been flying for some time now, and some kits are in the process of being distributed and evaluated by test builders. Over Memorial Day, they completed load tests on the aft fuselage and tail structure. The Scalebirds team reported that results showed the aft fuselage and tail structure to be capable of 5G at full gross, 1,350 pounds, up to Yellow Line Cruise VNO, 4G at VNE. This offers a 0.5 times safety factor before the potential of breaking the structure. At acro weights, some 1,200 pounds, they're reporting over 6, under 4 at VA maneuvering speed or low cruise. The cumulative results of their testing has allowed them to conclude that 6G will be the design load for aerobatic maneuvers and that above resides the safety factor yield region with an ultimate limit of at least 9 Gs before braking. Quote, it can be bent, but will bring you home for repairs. Above 9G, all bets are off of bringing the plane home, end quote. The P-36 is on our list of birds we gotta fly at Oshkosh, and we'll let you know what we determine. After these messages, WayXB One Week Wonder delivered to the Smithsonian. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. WayXB One Week Wonder delivered to the Smithsonian. A novel Sonex WayXB, the object of an aggressive One Week Wonder building campaign, has joined a host of historic aircraft at the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center. Near to such history-making airframes as Bob Hoover's Strike Commander, the Space Shuttle Discovery, and the B-29 Enola Gay, WayXB November 220 Whiskey Whiskey has been added to the collection that has been viewed by millions over the years. The aircraft was constructed in just seven days by some 2,000 volunteers at Oshkosh 2022. The One Week Wonder made its first flight a few weeks later on August 18th. Russell Lee, curator of home-built aircraft at the National Air and Space Museum, said, quote, this airplane will impress visitors with the innovation and technology that is everywhere in the home building movement and recreational aviation. Although one of the smallest airplanes displayed at the Udvar Hazy Center, its power to excite visitors about the freedom of flight equals the largest aircraft displayed here." End quote. This is not the first Monet designed to inhabit the Smithsonian, as a customer-built Moni motor glider is also on display in the Udvar Hazy Center, where it hangs from the ceiling not far from the One Week Wonder. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.